This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Welcome to Group Accounts. When you did financial reporting, you learned how to prepare a consolidated balance sheet or profit and loss account and had to deal with all sorts of horrible adjustments. In SBR, things move on. So you won't have to do a whole consolidation, but you will have to produce some of the numbers in a consolidation. The most popular one is, of course, goodwill. In addition, you'll have to explain the adjustments that you're making. And so a lot of marks are for what you write in terms of words rather than your calculations. If you calculate a number slightly wrongly, you may still get full marks because they're looking at your approach and they forgive you if you make the odd transposition error. So bear that in mind when you study this. If, as always, you're rusty on group accounts, you should look back at your own or our financial reporting notes and maybe just have a quick go at a basic consolidated balance sheet just so that you can remember where things go in the accounts. We look at the same sort of structures that you saw in financial reporting, <clears throat> but later in the syllabus, we're looking at unusual group structures. We're also going to be looking at what happens if you have foreign subsidiaries and something that's new for you will be consolidated cash flow. But here we're just looking at some of the basics, initially reminding ourselves about what a subsidiary is and what an associate is. When you first learned about a subsidiary, then the rule that you had, the rule of thumb was more than 50% and the method of accounting was consolidation. Well, consolidation is still true, but in some circumstances, as we'll see later, you can have a subsidiary, even if you don't own 51% of the shares. Now, subsidiary, we've already said, haven't we, is umbilically linked to the word consolidation. Remember, consolidate is umbilically linked to the idea of adding together all the assets and liabilities, all the income and expenditure. So if you consolidate your family assets, you'd work out what each of you owned and add it together. Subsidiaries must be consolidated. Subsidiaries exist if there is an element of control. So although more than 50% is a guideline in terms of the voting shares. Essentially, what matters is that in substance, there is control over another entity. So the definition that I'm just going to highlight in blue is very important. And you need to write down the keywords in the exam if there's any doubt about whether something is a subsidiary or not. As you can see, I'll highlight the keywords. It's the power to direct activities of the other company. So can I tell them what to do? Secondly, I'm exposed to variable returns. In other words, they're equity shares. So I've got some equity shares in the company. That's what variable returns means, doesn't it? equity shares. And thirdly, can I use my power to extract dividends if I need to? So am I able to use my power to extract returns for me? So if you're able to direct what the company does, if you own ordinary shares, and you can use your powers to get dividends out of the company, it's a subsidiary. Irrespective of the number of shares that we own, we will look at some rather unusual group structures 
a bit later. Where there is a subsidiary relationship, of course, as we've already said, I must prepare consolidated accounts. So make sure before the exam, you learn that definition or learn the words that I've highlighted. Now, in order to prepare group accounts, you prepare group accounts on the assumption that we are actually combining our business with someone else's business. So the next issue is, is there really a business combination? This is something that is relatively new. And so again, it's something that you must be aware of. Supposing you took over a company and all the company owned was some shop units. It had no staff. It would eventually rent the units out, but it's not at the moment. So I take over a company. The company owns some empty shop units and that's all there is. Have I really bought a business or have I bought shop units? If I've bought shop units, then clearly I ought to book the thing straight away as PPE or maybe investment properties. If I've bought a company, I need to start, if it is a business, thinking about things like goodwill. So again, this is something else that sounds a bit theoretical, but I'd strongly recommend that you learn it just down here. So is there a business combination? Do I need to go ahead and do full group accounts? Well, a business, according to the standard, is where there are inputs and a process, and the process is able to create outputs. So the example I've got there is of a chair maker. So do they have some wood? Do they have a machine? And I think the key thing is the staff. So if you've actually got employees, that would therefore imply there's a process in place. So I think that staff are very, very important. If you've got taken over something that has some staff, it suggests that you're taking over a business. Therefore, you'd need to separate out the assets. And the difference between what you pay and the assets would, of course, be goodwill. As it says, Underneath in the notes, if all the business does is hold a single asset, perhaps it's not a business, perhaps it's just a single asset. And you may see in model answers, they refer to this thing called the concentration test. If the company you're taking over is simply everything is concentrated in one single asset, like a license, which is not currently being used, perhaps it's just a license and not a company. You may be saying, well, how do I do the calculations? You won't be, because a lot of this exam is about explanation. But in a requirement, if it says, is there a genuine business combination, then produce the yellow words and try and reach a bit of a conclusion. Further down, there's a couple of other bits of jargon that you'll recall. Group accounts are all about substance over form. The parent does not legally own the assets of the subsidiary. However, of course, it controls them. And so in substance, we ought to reflect those assets in the group balance sheet. I think about things like a football club you know, if you've taken over a football club effectively again, what's happening there? You control all of the assets, you control the players, you control the way the stadium's used. So because there is control, then actually, I will actually consolidate all of the assets. You might remember that in a group balance sheet, we consolidate all of the assets, all of the liabilities, Ownership is dealt with in separately, where you have to identify the bit that belongs to the NCI 
minority or non-controlling interest. So a little bit theoretical there in terms of the terms, but important that you learn the definition of control and the definition of a business. We'll get into the mechanics of consolidation a bit later. The other one that you've met so far is the concept of the associate. And the associate, you'll remember, is umbilically linked to words like significant influence. We'll revise the accounting a bit later, but the method of accounting is, remember, known as equity accounting. There is an associate relationship if you have significant influence. What is it that determines significant influence in an exam? The examiner will probably say significant influence. And really that is normally exercised if you have a place on the board. So to me, that is what matters. If you see that they have directors on the board, it suggests you may well have significant influence because those individuals can become a nuisance at the board meeting. A secondary indicator is that is to look at the shareholding. So if, for example, you're somewhere between 20 and 50% of the shares, that might suggest significant influence, but it's not the only determining factor. The key thing is, do you have a seat on the board? And there's a little example here that illustrates that of influence. So the parent owns 19.9% of the shares of this other company. They've got 25% of the directors. Well, that to me means it's significant influence. That to me, therefore, means that I should be using equity accounting. So in that little session, what we've done is really to remind ourselves about subsidiaries and associates. We'll talk next about how we do the accounts where we have subs and associates in the balance sheet and also in the profit and loss account.